Yeah, sorry I haven't been doing many videos. I've been a bit busy lately. We're uh, currently at Phillip Island and uh, you just saw what just went past. So we're shooting a few Lambos, a bit of fun. I'll, uh, I'll get a couple more vids and then we'll get back to scheduled nugget programming. Puppies. Woo. I'm not going to film though because I want to enjoy it. Well, as you can see by the, uh, the little opening video, I've been uh, I've been pretty busy doing some pretty fun things. So the uh, yeah, shooting Lambos at Phillip Island was really cool, and getting a uh, getting a joyride around the track in the Aventador S was was sick. You really just can't comprehend how quick those damn things are. Like, yes, they're a lot of money, but once you go for a lap in one, you kind of figure out where the money's going. Uh, very cool experience. I was I was pretty stoked, and thanks to. Uh, to our friend Milos, the, the lead race driver, for getting Doug and I in one of those cars and getting us out for a lap. We were, uh, we were really stoked. He's a good dude. So, uh, yeah, here we are. We're, uh, what, a uh, week and a half, two weeks away from uh, the next track day. I'm very excited about it. It's going to be at Minton, uh, Winton and Motor Raceway, so it's a full-size truck, unlike the last one we did. Um, last time we were here, we put the suspension in the car, and now we need to make sure it's working. So basically we need to make sure the wheels are pointing in the right direction, um, the cam is all set up, and it's all ready to go. Um, I want to preface this whole video with I am learning as I go, as I have mentioned many times, yet people seem to forget that I am not a mechanic, I'm a photographer, I'm doing this purely for fun and as a learning process, so yeah, don't hold, hold me over the coals over this, it's some things I'm going to get wrong. Let's deal with it. Anyway, let's uh, get started on uh, on getting this car ready to rock and roll. Alrighty, so the first thing I want to do is, I know there's a lot of people on this channel that uh, really do know their cars and they race and they just know everything and good for you, you can skip over this bit. But I know there's a lot of people on here that are uh, new to cars and new to all this sort of stuff, um, as am I to a lot of this. So I'm going to run through the very basics of uh, basically setup. And, and as I said, I'm learning this as I go, so don't have, hold me over to coals for it. Um, so we'll start off with the basics. I'll try and maybe do some diagrams or something over this. We'll see what happens. If it happens, it happens. Um, toe is one of the basic ones. So you think your wheels are actually in a straight line, they're not. Uh, you can set up a toe. So what that means is the front wheels um, can either be towed in, like pigeon towed if you will, or towed out. Um, on front wheel drive cars, you tend to tow out a little bit. The reason for this is 
Um, everything's not solid in the front end of a car. There's rubber bushes and lots of little things that can move around and stretch. So if you tow out a bit, which means the wheels are kind of pointing out a tiny bit, when you accelerate in a front wheel drive car, the power actually pulls the wheels into line. Um, tow can also mean if you, if you towed out quite a bit on a race car, like on a tight track, it actually gives you more steering, more, more pull into the corners. Um, but that can also slow you down the straight because you imagine if your wheels are pointed out, um, yeah, you're going to get drag and it won't, you won't get high speed. So, um, so the tow is quite important. So we're going to, um, I've got some stuff today and we're going to set the tow and I'll show you how to do that. Um, the next thing is camber. So if anybody's watched uh, V8 supercars or any other racing, you'll see that the wheels aren't actually straight up and down, they're actually on an angle like this. Um, the reason for the angle, and I, I actually had a remote control car with really cool uh, suspension geometry, I was going to try and show you on that and I completely forgot to bring it today, so we'll, uh, we'll try and uh, explain it the best we can. The way the suspension works is when you lean a car into a corner, when you go around a corner, the inertia pushes the car to one side, obviously to the outside of the corner. When your wheels are like this, the way the suspension geometry works is as you go out, the wheel actually straightens up on the road. So the whole car is tilted, but the wheel will actually straighten up. Now you think about the wheel being a square and you've got your contact patch on the road. Uh, when we're going down a straight road, I need a box. Let's get a box and explain this to you. What's that for? Junk. Let's not worry about that. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Here, imagine this is our wheel. So this is the profile of the wheel from the front if you're looking at the car. Tilty wheel, you're on camber. As you go around the corner, the wheel actually comes down like that. So our contact patch on the bottom when you go down the straight is only a very little bit on the left hand side there. Right hand side for you. And as we go around the corner, the whole wheel ends up getting in contact with the road. Okay, so you need to camber your wheels out so when you go around the corner, you get as much tire on the road as possible, giving you much more grip. There's a lot more to this. There's scrubbing and all sorts of stuff, but we don't need to get into that today. But the basics are, we'll see, um, we're allowed to run up to four degrees camber. Um, I'm setting the car up for four degrees on the front and three degrees on the back. This is recommended to me. Um, and yeah, as we go into the corner, we're gonna get more contact patch on the road, therefore more grip. That's camber, does that make sense? We'll, we'll do another little thing and try and show you. Um, the next one, which is quite obvious, is ride height. So that is how high the car is off the ground. Um, obviously, if the car's higher up, like a four-wheel drive, you've got much more uh, inertia throwing the car around, and that's gonna make it um, pretty wobbly to the corners. That's why most sports cars and performance cars are really low to the ground. However, you don't want to drop it right down its guts because you need some suspension travel. If you don't have enough travel, any bumps in the road, in the track and anything like that will unsettle the car and you won't get grip. So you do need suspension travel. So it's a compromise between keeping the car nice and low to the ground, um, but also having enough suspension travel where the suspension can do its work. Um, on the same note as ride height, we have rake, which is basically how low the front of the car is compared to the back. So you can have a lot of rake, which means the back's higher than the front. Um, this can change a few things. Um, with a lot of rake like that, when you go into a corner, it tends to pitch the car into the corner. So on tighter tracks, say like uh, Bryant Park, um, Haunted Hills, like my first track day, um, if the back's higher than the front, you tend to be able to tip the, cor the car in and turn corners a lot more aggressive. Um, this isn't as prevalent, say like if you're at a track like Phillip Island with big, long, fast corners, you tend not to run as much rake. You keep the car almost level, um, and that keeps it stable throughout long, fast corners. You know, you've got um, the corner number one in Southern Loop, which is just a huge, fast corner. You know, the Lamborghinis go through there at a hundred and forty uh, odd, hundred and sixty odd, easy on the Southern Loop. Like it's ridiculous, anyway. Um, so you need the car to be sitting nice and stable. If the back's up in the air, it's going to start moving around, all sorts of weird stuff. Um, what else? I think that covers the basics. There's a lot more, obviously we've got our suspension settings, we can set the, um, the stiffness, then we've got much more, we've got the top camber adjustment, uh, you've got the, oh shit, there's the angle on the front of the struts, which changes a lot of things. Basically, all we really need to worry about on this car is ride height, rake, camber, and tow. Um, yes, we can kind of stuff with the other things, but they're the main things we're gonna worry about on this car. Um, just a quick note, there are a lot of, there's not much we can do with these cars. They're pretty regulated. The suspension setup is a huge one where you can do quite a bit to it um, compared to the rest of the car. And 
everybody has an opinion on this. When I put out, I, I went online and said, hey guys, I just need some basic setups. Like I just want a baseline setup so I can get out on the track and then I can start adjusting it myself. I had so many messages and I don't think any of them were the same. Every single one, every single person swears their setup was the best setup and they were all completely different. So I right, thank you so much for everyone who gave me advice. Um, I think it just need to take a little bit of advice from everyone and come up with my own ideas, take the car out on track and then I can adjust it from there. Anyway, let's get going on adjusting these setups. Alrighty, so uh, the first thing we need to do is do the camber. Now I showed you in the last video that crappy little eBay camber tool I bought. It was so inaccurate, it was terrible. So what I've done is I bought one of these little guys. It's, um, yes, it's an eBay one too, but it's actually really accurate. I've tested it a bunch of times, it seems really good. So it's just a little digital level box. And then what I've done is I've got a piece of angle iron here um, and I just drilled, uh, basically what I want is I want the contact patch to be on the outer lip of the rim. I don't want to do it on the tire because obviously the tire bulges more at the bottom than it does at the top. All that sort of crap. So we want to use the rim because the rim should be straight unless we buckled it, but I know these are straight. Uh, so I measured those points and I've drilled two holes in the angle iron, uh, drilled it and tapped it and then put in some cap head bolts and then using our... Um, vernier calipers uh, accurately measured the height of the heads of the bolts so I know they are exactly the same height and then just put a, a couple of nuts on there to lock them off so they can't move because um, it's an angle iron it's straight you know I've checked it straight but yeah it's it's straight you know the uh, sort of fabricating 101 if you put a fold in a piece of steel it doesn't bend as easy or at all um, so now that's done what we can do is beauty of this little guy is it's magnetic so we clip him in and we can put it up against just in the middle there, up at the top, at the bottom there. And oh, come over here. And that shows us 86 degrees. Obviously it's just measuring the other way around, but that 86 equates to four degrees. So that is exactly four degrees of camber uh, on the front wheels, which is exactly what I want. Um, and that is a super duper cheap and easy way to measure. Um, you know, there's all sorts of fancy ones online, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That'll work fine and that'll work on uh, on those wheels perfectly. And I can just measure it up and check my camera. So sorry I didn't film uh, making that one, but I don't think you guys need to see me drill two holes and tap them and put screws in. It's, it's really not that complicated. Very easy piece of kit. Got that online for I think about 12 bucks um, and yeah that is a super duper easy way to measure our camber so that's done um, I've checked the other wheels by the way and they're all within point one of a degree of exactly where I want them so uh, three degrees on the back four degrees on the front um, that's it because these camber bolts um, the the bottom of the MCA they've actually got the washers to set the camber we do have the adjustments in the top but if they're sitting um, pretty much all the way out, it should all be where we need it, and it is, so we don't need to stuff with that. Huzzah, great news. Now we get on to setting our toe for the front of the car. So the next thing we need to set on the car is the toe of the wheel. So that's um, whether the wheels, the front wheels are pointing out or pointing in. Um, I've spoken to a bunch of people once again, I've got a bunch of different results, um, but the general consensus seems to be about two millimeter toed out. Now what that means is, if we're to measure from the front outer edge of this, the left tire, to the right tire, and then the back outer edge of the left tire to the right tire. So we're basically measuring that distance and that distance. You subtract the back from the front and you should have two millimeter more on the front than the back. That makes sense? And that's called total toe. You can have toe, uh, left and right toe you can set differently, all this sort of stuff. Um, now there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, you can take it to a, uh, a tire place and they've got all the fancy laser guided missile systems that do all this stuff. I have no idea how any of that works. Um, what a lot of the XL, XL guys do is they run a bar on the front of the back of the car that's bolted to a exact space uh, place each time and they run a string line down the side of the car and then they can measure to the tire from the string line and they can work out the toe from that. I think that's a really good idea. However, it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted something a bit more compact. I don't want to take around big bars in the car. Um, and I, I don't like the idea of string lines being able to move and things. I thought there must have been a better way. So 
uh, looking online, I found a cool little solution called toe plates. So what toe plates are, basically a plate that sits here, plate that sits there, and it sits off the rim, kind of like our camber gauge, but this way. Um, and then you run tape measures uh, underneath, and they hook up together, and then you can measure on the tape measure the toe. It seems pretty simple. Um, except these toe plates are expensive. I found, I think the cheapest I found was uh, a pretty average set for 250 bucks, not including shipping. I think the shipping was like an extra 80. So we're looking over $300 for a set of plates. So it's pretty ridiculous. So what I did is I went and saw the same guys. I got my alloy for the door skins and the air box and said, hey, have you got any sort of three, four mil thick uh, alloy plates? And he's like, yep, got some scrap there. So he sold me, he cut some plates up for me for 40 bucks. Um, and then I bought them back and I put some folds in them and here we are. So uh, the reason for the folds are, as we spoke about the angle iron, is we need this to remain flat and straight. Best way to do that is to put a couple of folds in it, it'll remain straight and it won't be able to bend. Um, I went and saw as an engineering mob up the road from my road, uh, from my house, and I said to him, hey, can you just put a, a, 45, a 45 degree fold and a 90 degree fold in this? And uh, yeah, no worries. So I dropped off some beers for them for the weekend and they were happy to just put a couple of folds in. It took them a couple of minutes. Easy done. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video of that happening. That would have been cool. Um, but yeah, they put some folds in it for me and I have two of these suckers here. So I've got two plates, one for each side. Um, so now all we need to do is the way they'll sit is just against the car there. Um, same as our camber gauge, we need to put some standoffs. So we put some bolts um, through to the other side so it can sit on this lip of the ring. Um, and then we just cut some little slots down here for the tape measures to sit in. Um, and that's pretty much it. We just need to make sure that those standoffs are exactly the same distance. And then, uh, yeah, we run the tape measures under the car, hook them in, and that'll give us our, uh, our toe measurements. So let's get measuring and we'll put the standoffs in and then we'll cut the slots and we're done. <laughs> So we've got uh, both the standoffs in there now and you saw me measure with the Vernier caliper to make sure they're both exactly at the right spot. Now, with any luck, yay. Let's bring you over here. You can see hopefully there that the standoffs are sitting perfectly on the lip of the ring. And, uh, and that is perfect. I love it. I love when things just work. Um, so you might be wondering about the bottom of it because you can have it sitting out or you can sit it in. Because we're measuring and subtracting the distance, it doesn't matter where the bottom sits. The only thing that matters is if that plane is level, uh, which it is, so that's perfect. So now what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll pop those uh, bolts out. We'll put the other plate, uh, we'll put them back to back and then we can mark the holes because the wheels are exactly the same. Uh, drill those, put the bolts in, measure them all up, make sure they're all the same. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna clean this up. I'm gonna take the sharp corners off, clean up the edge with the flappy disc, just so when I'm handling them, I'm not slicing my hands open. Um, and then we'll cut some slots in here for the tape measures, and we're done. Okay, so our plates are all cleaned up. We've got our standoffs on there and it's sitting uh, 
really nicely against the wheel. Um, now we just need to make our slots for the tape measures to sit in. I had a look on the um, uh, I had a look under the car, so we need to make sure the tape measures aren't going to hit anything because they go underneath the car. And um, so I've measured the uh, the lowest point of the car to make sure it's all good. And now we'll just uh, we'll, I've marked off there where I want to put my slots. Um, so we're going to cut them in. I think probably with the bandsaw or the grinderette. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. And then um, probably make some little indents for the tape measure to sit in so it doesn't fall out. <laughs> Okay, and that's our plate's done. So this is the side that we hook the, uh, the metal end into. So I've got little scallops cut out like that. Obviously they'll go under the car. And then on the other one, we've just got some cleaner slots for the tape itself to sit through. Do like that, and we get an accurate measurement off of the metal. Great success. I got a set of tape measures from Bunnings. There's some cheapos. I think they're like, I don't know, five, 10 bucks each or something like that. Um, so yeah, basically we've now built a set of toe plates that I was looking at spending 300 bucks on and I spent uh, 40 bucks on the metal, so 10 bucks on those, so that's 50 bucks and some beers for the guys to bend it up. That is pretty good and honestly there is no difference between this and the bought ones, they're the same thing. Cool, so now we can um, set up our plates. So we'll set this one up as the measuring side. Pop that there. I'm hoping this works because this is the first time I've actually even looked at doing this. Set that up as our hooky side. And now we run the tape meshes underneath and see what happens. sitting in there properly, which they are, because those little grooves I cut, that is perfect, sitting on our rims properly. Now, this side. We play the measuring game. So that's sitting on our rim properly. Just lift that guy up. Slide him in there, that guy up, slide him in there. So where are we at? Okay, I had to have a little play with this because it's the first time I've done it. I just put these, uh, my uh, nut and bolt boxes there just to keep the tape measures uh, level, just to make it a bit easier. Um, but yeah, we just measured the front and the back. I did this by eye, so it's, it's all out of whack. Um, but the front is uh, 1712 and the rear is 1719. So at the moment, it's actually towed in, it's pigeon towed. Uh, there's a seven mil difference. What we want is a two mil tow out. So we actually need to move the whole thing out nine mil altogether. So the next thing we do is we'll uh, jack up the car and get under there. And because I know the steering straight, I uh, undo the tie rods at the same amount. So I do, if I do three turns this side, I do three turns that side, it means the steering's gonna stay straight. Um, and then we can try and get our toe working well. So we'll put the handbrake on, we'll put a jack under the front of the car, and I'll show you what to adjust. Okay, so we've got the car jacked up. 
let's uh, try and get a camera in here so you can see what's going on. Holy moly. Oh, I think it worked. Okay. So with a bit of light, these are our tie rod ends. So this connects to the wheel and that goes off to our steering rack. Um, so it's very easy to adjust these. All you got to do is that's just a locking nut. Come on, light. Um, that's just a locking nut. So we just undo that one and then we spin this shaft here. See how it's got a, a uh, flats on it, just like a, a nut or a bolt. So we just um, adjust those in or out. And obviously if we adjust it in, it brings the wheel around, brings the back of the wheel in, which is what we need to do because at the moment it's towed out. So these are too far out. So we'll just do some adjustments. I'll get it kind of where I think it's going to be. And then um, we put it back down and we remeasure and see if it works. Now, uh, what we need to do, something I haven't mentioned yet, is when you do anything to your wheels or your suspension, sorry, your suspension setup or your alignment, you need to drive the car backwards and forwards a bit, let everything settle. Um, you can use what's called slip plates, which are basically just two sheets of metal with a um, grease in the middle and just allow everything to move. Um, otherwise, you're gonna measure it, it's not gonna be right. I'm pretty sure I've gone way too far on this and how it's towed out heaps, but we'll, uh, we'll pull it out, we'll have a measure. I know how many turns I've done, so what I did is I put the spanner on, I do a quarter turn, and I count the quarter turns. And so I did 10 quarter turns both sides. I think it's gonna be way too much. But uh, after measuring, we'll get an idea and I'll sort of have an idea of how many turns to, to get it right. So uh, let's move the car back and forwards and we'll measure up again. Samsonite, I was way off. So um, as this is the first time I've done this, I went way too far and I'm now 37 mil difference. So yeah, it is. It is crazy towed out, but now I've got a kind of an idea of how many turns. Way too many turns. Um, cool. Car back up, give it a tweak, try it again. Um, good thing is, once I've kind of got this right, I know that, uh, you know, because I'll it'll go out of whack when I hit curbs and things like that. So I hit ripple strips and all that jazz. So once I've got it close, I know it's just like a quarter of a turn here and there just to get it right. It's just this initial period of uh, getting used to it. I could even write a little bit of a cheat sheet on the... Um, on the camber plate to let me know like a quarter of a turn is approximately, you know, half a mil or something like that. So cool, let's go again. Alrighty, I had a couple of goes at this because uh, as I said, it's my first time doing it and trying to figure it all out. Um, I've streamlined my process. I figured with the wheel on full lock, I can actually get to the um, tie rod ends without having to jack the car up. So that's easy, you know, just undo it, um, tweak them, drive the car back as a forward so that it will settle and then put the plates on and measure it all up again. So the good news is now, let me turn my microphone around. Um, so I just measured these up. I've got it pretty pretty close. Measured it up and it's given us 1733 in the front, 1731 on the back. I'm not great at maths, but for me, that gives me two mil toe out, which is exactly what I'm after. So that is perfect. What I've got to do now is just tighten up the, um, the nuts and the tie rod ends and uh, good to go. So those plates worked really well. And for whatever I worked it out at um, 50, 60 bucks, I think that's pretty sweet. And they'll uh, just pack up in the back of the car. I can take them to events. So my steering feels whack or I want to try something else. So I can just um, pop them out. I know I can do it on the ground now. I don't even need to jack it up. I can set it all up on the, on the ground easy. Um, and that's it. Alrighty, and that's it for today. So we've got our wheels aligned, the camber's all correct, and everything's pretty good. Um, the only thing I didn't adjust is the ride height, but I have um, checked it out and it looks pretty good. Um, I did have uh, one of the guys from the XL Racing who's been at Winton a lot say I could probably jack it back, back up a bit, give it a bit more rake and give it a bit more turn in. Um, but I think I'm gonna run it how it is now after the first session, see if it needs more turn in, and then I can do it on the um, do it on the day because it's pretty easy to do you know just got to jack it up and I can get the spanner in there and, and wind the height up a bit so um, yeah it's pretty cool um, I do want to try and get my brake ducts done before Winton but I don't know if I'm gonna have time um, hopefully that'll be the next video is getting the brake ducts in this puppy and uh, if not the next video will be at Winton so uh, we'll see you next time thanks for watching 